Hi, this is Mill from Silent IT, and today I'm going to explain domain names, why we have them, how they work, identifying them, and a few security tips. Now, if you're going to take a simplistic view of the Internet, it's really a series of interconnected computers. And every single one of them has what's called an Internet address, or an IP address. Google.com, for example, is this number right here. Now, remembering a number like this and typing it in your browser obviously doesn't really work. So domain names are invented uh, for our convenience. It's sort of a yellow pages of the web. Some examples might be silencet.ca, google.com, facebook.com. Now the nice thing about one of these is that only one identity can own a domain name. So this is really important for you know authenticity. So if I'm on Facebook.com, I know it's Facebook.com. Now let's discuss a little bit about the domain name structure so we can identify them in the future and understand them a little bit better. There's usually three parts to domain name. I'm going to start at the right hand side, right after the dot, and the just dot ca. Okay? That's called the top level domain. Uh, some examples are com, org. And there are ones that are a little bit more complicated that are separated by a second dot. So .co.uk, um, .com.ar, for example, as in google.com.ar is the Argentinian Google. Now, they're usually only four to five characters or two to five characters. They never have any numbers, and they never have more than two dots. Second level of domains are the ones that you can buy and tack on to these top level domains. It's the part that's right before the top level. Okay, it's cons it consists of letters, numbers, and hyphens. Some examples would be Google, Facebook, Twitter, and then if you put them together, obviously you get something like Google.com. There's also this www I didn't touch upon yet, and that's called a subdomain. Now, if I own a domain such as Google.com, I can latch an infinite amount of subdomains on top of it. So here I've created an example. Like that's best.web.designers.ever.sciencet.ca. So this is the domain that my company actually owns, it's sciencet.ca. But this bestwebdesigners.ever is just a series of subdomains. Now, the nice thing is that they create these so I can point any one of these to a different website. So maps.google.com goes to the maps uh, website. News.google.com goes to the news site. www.google.com goes to, obviously, their search. I can do the same. So I've done one for our website, and I've done one for where we sell domain names. Now, the key to understanding this is, is it's important for social hacking. Because, because I can create whatever I want in terms of subdomain, I can do a little trickery. So any, I can create any one of these domains, for example. So if I owned hacker.com, I could create facebook.com.hacker, which can obviously be a little deceiving because if I was first look at this in the URL, it would look like facebook.com, but it in fact would not be owned by facebook.com, it would be owned by hacker.com. Here's another example, cibc.ca, but really it's iwantyourmoney.com is the actual domain name, and they just added this subdomain here. And I'll show you an example of one of those. Here, one that I just quickly created. Here's facebook.com.sciencet.ca. Now, as you can see, this looks a lot like Facebook. And all I did was I took Facebook and I copied it and I just put it up here. It took me a few minutes. And if you were to type your email address and password, I could essentially steal them. So, what? that's why this is important. It's important to understand how domains work and identify them so you know where you actually are. What you want to look is you look at this whole URL here. You want to look for this second, this third slash. You know, obviously, forget this part, but this third slash and then move backwards, and that's your domain name. So it'll always be your first top level, which could either have one dot or two dots, but it's always really short, followed by a name, such as silenceit.ca. And then the rest of it is subdomain, and I can put as many as I want in there. And it can be several dots, it doesn't really matter what that says. All you need to know is that they're actually owned by silentsite.ca. So when next time you're on your site, you're looking at something and you hit a link, this is especially important, not when you type in facebook.com, but when you hit a link that brings you to Facebook, especially in an email that you might receive. 
that you're going to the right location. And that's been Domain Names Explained. Uh, you can check out more of our blogs and tips and helpful stuff at sonicit.ca slash blog. Or you can even buy a domain name at domains.sonicit.ca. Thanks so much. Till next time.